exactly. Uh, all right, so welcome to Planning, Zoning, and Historical on Monday, August 16th. And going to call roll, we've got Allen, Benedict, Bradford, Cash, Evans, Gamble, Hall, Murphy, O'Connell, Parker, Rutherford, Stiles, Toombs, Van Rees, Welch, and Withers. I can't go as fast with the mask on either, so sorry. Uh, chair detects a quorum, so we're gonna run through consent. Does anybody know in advance anything that needs to come off consent? I will read them just a second. Matthew, do you know what we're doing with Rosenberg's um, traditional? Is there anything wrong with deferring it more than one meeting so I don't have to read it next meeting? Deferring it to whenever the next chair is here? Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we'll add to defer one meeting, item number four and item number five. Does anybody else have any changes before I run through it all? Okay, so we, on consent, we have starting bills on second reading, page two of your agenda, if you're printed the same way that mine is, would be item number four, item number five, both to defer for one meeting. I was gonna run through the numbers and then read the, the caption with it too, but I can read the number with it. So item six, which is BL 2021-846, consent to approve. Item seven, 280, uh, I'm sorry, 847, consent to approve. Item eight, 848, consent to approve. Item nine, 849's on consent. Item 10, 850, consent to approve. 851 is consent to approve. 852 is consent to approve. We are now on bills on third reading. And we've got item 13, 7, uh, 722. Item 14, 751 with amendments. Item 15, 776. Item 16, 779. Those are all consent to be approved. Then we jump down to 18, 789. Consent to be approved along with 19790, number 2796, 21798, 22808, 23 is 809 with amendments. Item 12, skipping down to 25, which is 812. Item 26 with amendments is 813. I will sign on to all accounts Lady Tombs bills today. Item number 27 is 814, 28 is 815 with amendments. Item 29, 816. Item 30 is 817. Item 31 is 818, 32, 819, 33, 820. 34 is 821, Aaron's here. Uh, 35, 822, 36, 823. 37, 824, uh, 38. Do we have a letter from Delicia Porterfield? Have I missed anybody who we don't have letters from or anything? Okay, so. Okay. All right, I will sign on to item 38. Do we have a letter from Hancock? No, I will sign on to um, 826. And then item 40 is 828, and that is also on consent. Is there anything that needs to be bumped? All right, story time with Kathleen. Bills on second reading, BL 2021-654 by Rosenberg. Changes from RM2 to RS40 property located at 6000 River Valley Drive at the southeast corner of River Valley Drive and Newsom Station Road and located within a planned unit development overlay, 58.48 acres, all of which is described therein. Item number five, BL 2021-644 canceling a portion of the Riverwalk Planned Unit Development District located at 6000 River Valley Drive at the southeast corner of River Valley Drive and Newsom Station, 58.48 acres, approved for 61 multifamily dwelling units. Those are both to defer one meeting. Item number six is BL 2021-846. It abandons a, par a portion of Booker Street right-of-way and easement along the south property line of 745 23rd 
North Court. Item number seven is BL 2021-847 by Van Reese. It abandons Baxter Street right of way between Hart Lane and Home Road. Item number eight is BL 2021-848 by Cash and others. It abandons a portion of 14th Avenue South and alley number 393 right of way, an easement between Wedgwood Avenue and Ackland Avenue. Item number nine is BL 2021-849 by Sledge and others. It abandons a portion of an alley numbered 403 right of way from, 40, from 8th Avenue South to alley number 405. Item number 10 is BL 2021-850 by myself and Nash. And it accepts new sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for three properties located at 7150 and 7154. Nolensville Road and Nolensville Road unnumbered in Williamson County. Item number 11 is BL 2021-851 by Stiles and myself. It accepts a new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for properties located at Hobson Pike unnumbered, also known as Hobson Pike Townhomes Phase 1. Item number 12 is BL 2021-852 by Styles and myself. It's the same thing. Do I have to read it again? Those aren't rolled no, together? It's a, it's a little different. Okay, except yeah. new sanitary sewer mains and water mains, uh, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies and easements, properties located at Hobson Pike and numbered, also known as Hobson Pike Townhomes Phase 2. Bills on third reading. Item number 13 is BL 2021-722 as substituted. It allows district members of the Metropolitan Council to initiate applications to amend the official zoning map of the property owned by the Metro government and amending section 2.24.190 of the Metropolitan Code to require the Director of Public Property Administration to provide an annual property inventory to the Metro Council. Item number 14 is BL 2021-751, and it's by Councilman Young and myself, and it changes from RS10 to R10 to SP zoning for properties located at People's Court unnumbered and Liberty Lane unnumbered at the southern terminus of Heathcote Court, 55.28 acres, and that is with the proposed amendment. Item number 15 is BL 2021-776 by Council Lady Gamble. Changes from RS20 to R20 property zoning for property located at 1111 uh, Westchester Drive. Item number 16 is BL 2021-779 by Welch. Changes from RS5 to R6A zoning on properties located at 2700, 2703A, 2705A, 2704, 2706, 2707, 2709, 2711, 2713, Fannie Williams Street, approximately 400 feet south of Winslet Road. Item number 18, BL 2021-789 by Parker. Changes from SP to SP zoning for properties located at 217 Cleveland Street to permit all uses allowed under RM15ANS zoning. Item number 19 is BL 2021-790 by Parker. Changes from RS5 to RM20ANS zoning for property located at 141 Elmhurst Avenue, approximately 280 feet south of Fern Avenue. Item number 20 is BL 2021-796 by myself, and it amends section 17.12.0. 02 and 17.14.34 of the Metropolitan Code to modify the maximum height permitted in the RM9A and RM15A zoning districts to amend the standards that may be varied and to make housekeeping amendments pertaining to the table 17.12.02D. And that is amended. We amended that last time, is that correct? Okay, great. Item number 21 is BL 2021-798 by Rosenberg and others. It amends 17.16.25 of the Metropolitan Code zoning regulations to limit animal services as activities permitted as home occupations. 
Item number 22 is BL 2021-808 by Welch. It changes from RS 7.5 to RM 20 ANS zoning for property located at 473 and 475 Timmins Street at the southeast corner of Timmins Street and Mead Avenue, 0.48 acres. Item 23, BL 2021-809 by Lee. We don't have a letter. I will sign on to it. Amends uh, ordinance number BL 2006-1303 as amended by amending the SP zoning for various properties located north of Maxwell Road, 52.94 acres, approximately 430 feet east of Flagstone Drive to delete a condition of, in the SP pertaining to the construction of turn lanes at the intersection of Maxwell Road and Laverne slash Couchville Pike and to accept a financial contribution in lieu of con a financial contribution in lieu of construction from the developer of the Davenport Downs SP. That's with the amendment. Taking us to item 25, which is BL 2021-812 by Welch. It changes from IWD to MUGA, zoning for the property located at 504, 508, 510, 512, 514, 518, 520 Thompson Lane and 2807 Grandview Avenue at the northeast northwest corner of Grandview Avenue and Thompson Lane, 4.51 acres. Item number 26 is BL 2021-813, which I've signed on to with Council Lady Tombs, and it changes from RS10 to R8 to SP zoning for properties located at 1105 and 1107 West Trinity Lane, West Trinity Lane unnumbered, and Old Buena Vista Road unnumbered to permit 193 multifamily residential units, and that is with the amendments. Ooh, item number 27, BL 2021-814 by Council Lady Van Rees, and it changes from R10 to RM15ANS zoning for properties located at 405 Old Hickory Boulevard and Old Hickory Boulevard unnumbered at the northeast corner of Walker Street and Old Hickory Boulevard, 0.7 acres. Taking us to item 28, which is BL 2021-815 by Sledge with its amendments, it changes from CS, IWD, MUL, and MULA to SP, zone, SP zoning for properties located at 1214, 1216, 1218, 1220, 1230, 1232, Martin Street, 1309, Brown Street, 441, 447, 448, 449, and 451 Humphrey Street and Humphrey Street unnumbered along Houston Street, down Brown Street, and other, along either side of Humphrey Street. I think that's the first time I've seen it described that way, either side of Humphrey Street. 6.12 acres to permit a mixed use development. Whew, that was a mouthful. All right, item number 29 is BL 2021-816 by Welch. It changes from RS 7.5 to R8A zoning for properties located at 460, 464, and 468 Redner Street, approximately 170 feet west of Nolansville Pike. Item number 30 is BL 2021-817 by Tombs that I've signed on to. It has an amendment that it's going to travel with and it changes from R10 to SP zoning for property located at 3051 Stokers Lane at the northeast corner of Stokers Lane and Buena Vista Pike, 10.74 acres to permit 96 multifamily residential units. Item number 31 is BL 2021-818 by Syracuse and it changes from R8 to ORI zoning for properties located at 610, 628, 634, and 640 Earmark, is that set right? Earmark Drive, approximately 330 feet south of Sims Branch Way. Traveling along to is BL 2021-819 by Syracuse and it cancels a portion of a planned unit development overlay for properties located at 646, 700, 704, 706, 708, 712, Earmark Drive, Earmac Drive, zoned ORI 5.51 acres. Taking us to 33, which is BL 2021-820 by Parker. It amends the uh, 111th North First Street specific plan to include property located at 151 North First Street, approximately 900 feet north of James Robertson Parkway, zoned IR 
1.42 acres to increase the SP, the specific plan boundary to a total of 17.96 acres for mixed use development. Okay, we're almost through y'all. 34. BL 2021-821 by Hager and Evans. It changes from R10 to RS10 zoning for various properties located north of the Highland View Drive from uh, Juno Drive to Baton Rouge Drive, northwest to Trenton Drive, and eastward to Concord Drive, 111 acres. Traveling with that friend is BL 2021-822 by Hager and Evans, and it applies a contextual overlay for various properties located north of Highland View Drive from Drano Drive, Juno Drive to Baton Rouge Drive, northwest to Trenton Drive, and eastward to Concord Drive, zoned R10. 133.28 acres. Item number 36 is BL 2021-823 by O'Connell and it changes from IR to SP zoning located at 1227 Third Avenue North at the southwest corner of Monroe Street and the Third Avenue and Third Avenue North. It's 0.62 acres to permit a mixed use development. Item 37 is BL 2021-824 by Evans. It changes from R8 to SP zoning for properties located at 4033, 4039, 4085 Central Pike and Central Pike Unnumbered in the northwest corner of Tulip Grove Road and Central Pike, 23.43 acres to permit 208 multifamily residential units. Item 38 is BL 2021-825. You said we did or we didn't have a letter? Okay, Porterfield, I will sign on to it. It changes from R20 to SP zoning for property located at 2871 Ned Shelton Road, approximately 635 feet south of Bell Road, 18 acres to permit uses of IWD. 39 is BL 2021-826 by Hancock that I've signed on to. It changes from OG to MU. LA zoning at property located at 321 Larkin Springs Road and 601 Medical Park Drive at the southeast corner of Manzo Road and Larkin Springs Road, 5.26 acres. Item 40 is BL 2021-825 by Cash and Sledge. It amends the Hillsboro Village Urban Design Overlay District for various properties located on 19th Avenue, 20th Avenue South, 21st Avenue South, Ackland Avenue, Belcourt Avenue, Blakemore Avenue, Fairfax Avenue, Manola Boulevard, Wedgwood Avenue, 26.91 acres to clarify where ground level parking shall be lined with commercial or office uses on select street frontages and for all subdistricts. Brett Withers, can I get a motion? Thank you. Can I get like a throat lodging and a cup of water, please? All right, uh, <laughs> all those in favor of the consent agenda. Excellent, any opposed, any abstentions? With that, the consent agenda passes. Taking us to item number one, BL or RS 2021-1089 by Sledge and others. It accepts a grant from the Metro Historic Commission Foundation to the Metro Historic Commission to accept, I'm sorry, to assist with a, a portion of the costs associated with the master plan for Fort Negley Park. I will move it. Councilman Sledge, you are not on my committee. Councilman Withers, thank you. Councilman Sledge, your mic's on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this seems as good time I need to ask the administration for an update on the Fort Negley master plan. You would like to ask who? The administration. Jameson, your mic is on. I don't know if we have anyone here from the Parks Department. I'm looking back here, um, and I'll be certain to follow up with them, Councilman Sledge. I don't have any personal information regarding the status of the master plan at this point. Councilman Sledge, what would you like to do with your... I think it's, I think it's fine to go ahead and move in committee, but I, I'd, I'd like that, if it's all right with Mr. Jameson, for that update to be sent to all council members, please. Are you gonna, do you plan on holding it in parks? I assume it's double referred. No, it's, it's, I'm fine for it to go through committees, but it just, if we're, this is not the first grant we've had to go toward the master plan and I just don't have an update on it. Okay. Do we have anybody from Historic here? 
I thought we did earlier. It's not referred to parks. No. My concern is, is I'd like to know more about how, how historic is going to do this with parks, given some of their track records with grants and projects lately. Um, Council Lady Van Rees, how do you feel about sending this to parks as well? I'd like to keep it here if we're going to send it to parks too. Yeah. Councilman Sledge, do you have? Why? I mean, you could recommend it, but it has to be done. Oh, we have to do it on the floor. It's not like official until we do it on the floor. Councilman Sledge, how would you feel if we uh, held it here for a meeting and referred it to parks as well, or requested or referred to parks? That's fine with me as long as it's not a time-sensitive grant. I can't imagine that it is coming from our own historical commission. But I'd want to confirm that with Mr. Jameson if he knows. All right, sounds like he does not know. So do you, is it better to roll it to the heel or are you okay with us deferring? Uh, if you want to roll it to the heel, I'll see what I can find We'll out. roll that to the heel. All right, taking us to RS 2021-1103 by Cash and others. It approves an intergovernmental agreement by and between TDOT and the Department of Public Works for traffic signal communication upgrades along Broadway and West End from First Avenue to 440. I will make a motion, Councilman Cash for the second, and if you don't mind sharing some information, since this is, I think, one of our kind of first in-dot things to come through here. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I gotta... You're good now, you're on. I second, and um, I mean, my, my understanding is that it is uh, the help signalization and, and improve traffic uh, along West End and it is one of the one of the promises of the of or goals of NDOT and um, I think it's it you know this this kind of technology should be used to help us uh, get Nashville cars moving um, and if there's somebody from NDOT here that wants to add specifics Councilman Parker, the answer is no. Um, but for NDOT, I'm not sure. Let's, Councilman Jamison, I think, is out in the hallway getting information on the first one. So why don't we just roll it down okay. a spot if that's okay? I'm gonna, we'll just roll it to the heel with the other one rather than trying did, to keep track. Did Councilman of it. Parker ask a question I didn't hear? Oh, it was, a, it was if we took a vote on the first. Bill. Okay. All right, taking us to item number three, RS 2021-1104 by O'Connell. It approves an intergovernmental agreement. This is also, I bumped it off. Do, you, do we need to wait for Jameson? You want me to continue? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I think um, it would be good to get an update from the administration and or NDOT, but I think I would um, subtly amend uh, Mr. Cash's remarks on these bills in that they will not just get uh, cars moving, they will get uh, transit vehicles moving as well. So this is this is really corridor improvements. It is. Councilman, uh, Councilman why don't can we yeah. come back to it when we've yep. got administration to deal with all of them? Let's knock some others out while we're waiting for the administration to come back in. Um, it can be the first, the we've got questions on NDOT stuff next, Mike. If you need a call anybody okay. but we'll go ahead and take up item number 17 which is bl 2021 788 by council lady henderson it changes from rs 20 to sb zoning for properties located at 4020 estes road approximately 430 feet west i'm sorry 430 feet north of hobbs road uh 1.03 uh, acres um i will make a motion to have it heard before us councilman withers for the second and then um, Council Lady Henderson, if you would like to um, discuss, do we hear from planning on these? I forget. I could turn you on, probably that would help too. Why don't we hear from Council Lady Henderson and then come to you if we need you, okay. Bob, thank you. You're on, Council Lady. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, colleagues, I know you've gotten uh, some emails in, in your inbox about this, and um, I appreciate that that uh, raises some concerns and, and some questions on your part, um, perhaps. But I am finding when I can get in touch with someone who I know to be uh, my constituent and explain how this is an anomalous uh, situation with an existing uh, accessory building, um, previously constructed, plumbed, habitable, um, uh, transparently advertised, purchased by um, these folks who are the applicants, uh, went to uh, Metro Codes, again, fully transparently with their renovation plan. Uh, the footprint is not increasing. The height is not increasing. They were uh, 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 given a permit uh, for this renovation by Metro Codes, uh, you know, went through uh, routine uh, approvals, came for, I, I think, I believe their um, plumbing sign-off check, um, electrical sign-off, and then it was a little something, I, whether that inspector or otherwise, kind of uh, made them look and kind of go back and see some of the previous permitting and kind of uh, have some questions. Um, and so, uh, as previously constructed, uh, that was not appropriate for that zoning, um, again, by the previous owners. Um, and so the permit was pulled. Um, construction was well underway, renovation almost completed. And so at that juncture, um, thinking they might have a remedy via the BZA, um, they went that way. Um, the BZA was very empathetic. <laughs> Um, to my constituents, um, but uh, did not have jurisdiction. And so, um, you know, this is not um, really ideal, but as, as best I understand is the only um, remedy uh, for these constituents because if they were to bring this into compliance per zoning, um, they would have to attach it um, to the main house. And um, it's, it's, it's a ways um, and it's not really a logical path and the thing that stands between it, if they were to have to build conditioned, walled, roofed space, because again, colleagues, as you know, you can't just use a pergola or trellis or something to connect it. It has to be connected, habitable, you know, uh, space. There is a 200-year-old uh, massive um, heritage oak tree, healthy, um, that these constituents have worked um, to make sure um, is, is healthy, that is in, in the path of connection. Um, and so, you know, what is before you is an anomalous situation where, um, you know, to make this right, they either have to connect it for the existing zoning um, or uh, cut down this tree to connect it. And so given um, that it was already on site, it is not increasing in footprint or height. Um, it was already habitable when they purchased it. They went uh, to codes, they got a permit. Um, it is just really an anomalous situation, colleagues. And so when I explain all of that to uh, constituents, they're like, oh, I didn't understand. And you know, respectfully, I think uh, the emails that you have received are um, in response to a specific uh, email list, email that does not, in my view, present um, the matter in its entirety. Um, it uh, says that this sets a dangerous precedent. And when people hear that, um, they get somewhat animated, um, understandably. Um, I also think this has been con complicated somewhat by the larger DADU conversation. And when you just use that That's acronym, people get kind of nervous. Um, but I would also point out to colleagues in the community that through this SP, um, this uh, is further constrained than it would be by base zoning. There can be no STRP use at all, whether um, type one or type two um, in this pool house guest house. Um, it is um, constrained, that use is um, prohibited through this SP. And once my constituents hear that, then they say, oh, I, I didn't understand. Okay, I see. So um, with that lengthy explanation, I apologize, but it is somewhat of a unusual um, uh, matter, um, I request your approval, please, and Cal welcome your questions. Council Lady, did we ever find out if it was originally permitted appropriately by the original, the people who built it? I think it was permitted. Mr. Wilkinson, can you speak to that? But um, You're on. 
Okay. Um, the accessory structure was um, originally permitted just as a garage with added space. It was never permitted to be full living area. The previous owner at some point put in a kitchen that was unauthorized and then sold it to the new owners, advertising it as a legal guest house. Gotcha. Okay. And I will say, um, I have driven by this. It's on my way to, um, she doesn't have pictures yet, to but it's kind a of weekly meeting I have. And you really, you can't, this is when you can't see from, from the yard or from the street. Um, and it is a large, the lot is, it, it, am I correct that it is large enough to subdivide into two? If you're, but I guess taking out, if, based on square footage alone, if you are not having to do lot frontage, it meets subdivision minus lot frontage. I don't know if it meets subdivision, but it is large enough to be divided. Okay. Yeah. Council Lady Henderson, do you want to add to that? You're still on. Um, yes, uh, Chair Wong, I appreciate you mentioning kind of when you drive by, how you see this. Um, as well, um, adjacent neighbors, um, are not opposed, and in fact, some are in support. Um, folks who look right at this, and it, it again, this exact same size structure um, has already been there um, for uh, several years. So, thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Any other questions, comments? All right, um, we're going to go for a vote on this. All in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right, I am abstaining. Okay. Um, that takes us down to BL uh, number 24, BL 2021-811 by Council Lady Roberts. And you said we had a letter, correct, Matthew? We have a letter from Council Lady Roberts. Okay, she's not here. We will roll to the heel in case she's coming. Um, taking us to I think that takes us back to the start of our journey. Back to item number one, which is RS 2021-1089 um, by Sledge and others. Already read it into the record, but just for fun, it accepts a grant from Metro Historic Commission Foundation to the Metro Historic F Commission to assist with a portion of the costs associated with the site's master plan for Fort Negley. And Mr. Jameson, sorry, um, could you report back? I think we, we had asked a question if, of where y'all stood on deferring this so we could hear more information and Parks could hear it. Sure, uh, just got in touch with Director Odom and copied Director Walker from Metro Historic. They will have an update on the site master plan uh, before tomorrow's meeting and in the interim, a, re a referral to the Parks Committee and a deferral one meeting does not cause them any time constraint problems, but thanks. Councilman Sledge, are you still okay with that? Yes, I'm comfortable with that. Thank you, Mr. James. Thank you for going along with us. So with that, I'm going to, uh, Councilman Withers, will you rescind your second of my original motion? Thank you. I rescind my first motion. Um, and my new motion is to defer one meeting and request a referral to parks. All those in favor? Aye. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Now we are on RS 2021-1103 by Cash and others. Um, bringing us back to it. It approves an intergovernmental agreement between, uh, by and between TDOT and the Department of Public Works. Do you want to tell him that, that we're going to ask questions? For signal, traffic signal communication upgrades along Broadway and West End Avenue and First Avenue to I-440. Uh, Councilman Cash. Uh, I, I, renew, I renew my... Um, Motion to approve. Yeah. I, uh, I'm excited about this change. I'm not going to pretend to understand the, the technicalities of it, which is why uh, if we've got somebody that can speak to it, to those, uh, that would be great. And I appreciate uh, Council Member O'Connell uh, correcting my cars and, and to traffic in general and transit. Right. We'll go to the administration and then to Councilman O'Connell, who I cut off earlier. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think we have several representatives from NDOT here, including Shanna Whitelaw, John Honeysucker, and Marty Sewell. Would any of them like to explain what's going on here? Are they here? 
Do you know about this? Oh, we're on uh, 1103. This is um, signal upgrades. Marty with my own eyes. Okay. Marty, if you could just give us a little bit of information about this project, um, maybe also what the ADA part of it is, if this is just signalization, if it's sidewalk signalization in, in addition to traffic signalization. Wait, I, I haven't turned you on. I have to find it. Public cable. Gotcha. Okay, you should be on back there. And we're on um, West End Broadway? Uh, yes. It is from uh, Broadway and West End from First Avenue to I-440. Sure. Um, this would, of course, um, it upgrades 29 signals, and I think you asked in particular about the, the ADD improvements, and that would be our match to provide the, any kind of AD improvements that are identified during the process. And so that's how we would um, accomplish the match. So are these traffic signals, or are they sidewalk signals, or both? Well, this is, this is attaching, giving the technology to the signals that can communicate with our future transportation management center and providing all of the technology upgrades that would be required to do that. Okay, I, I mean, I'm not trying to belabor the point. I'm just trying to get, if they are just traffic signals, I'm just wondering what the ADA part of traffic signals are. Well, whenever we address the intersections, for example, um, there were always, you always want to look and see if there are any ADA improvements to make in association with signals or whatever else you might be looking at at the time. Okay. All right. So, um, Marty, don't go far. Um, we've got another one. Any other questions? Comments? Cash. Yes, I'm kind of interested, like, this, does, it, does it have a good balance between tra uh, traffic that's going along the, the main corridor, along Broadway and West End, and the side streets, or does it give one priority, or it's, it's really smart so it does both and maximizes everything, right? Well, <laughs> it, it is a very smart system. It should be able to um, make those calculations um, as it's operating. The um, it would be a priority on the quarter itself, the main quarter, and would build from that. Um, and, and generally, the idea is that we're going to re reduce the, well, reduce the time that it takes for the transit vehicles to get through the system. That's the number one goal. And then, of course, all of the other goals that are, or other improve, other um, excuse me, meeting the other goals associated with that um, for walking pedestrians, for um, for bicycling, and everything else. Thank you. Um, Councilman O'Connell, do you have any comments or thoughts on this is not going before the Traffic and Parking Committee? Uh, I do not. Is, is one of them going before and the other not? No, I guess neither, neither one of them one is. Neither one of these are. Would you like it to go there? I think it'll be okay to just go to public work. Okay. All right. Do you have anything else you want? I cut you off earlier. No, just noting that the, the whole process of traffic signal uh, improvements should improve traffic signal priority for uh, transit. And so, you know, the, the I guess let me actually I'll, I'll, I will ask the question this way is is the is the ultimate um, I know we're going to get general intersection efficiency out of this but is the long term uh, possibility here that for both of these corridors that we will be able to implement full traffic signal priority for transit that's correct great that thank you nice. in which case I'm supportive of both initiatives all right um, any other comments or questions.
With that, all those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? Taking us to item number, th item, uh, I'm sorry, resolution passes. Item number three is RS 2021-1104. It approves an intergovernmental agreement by and between TDOT and the Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure for the Charlotte Avenue slash Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard Transit Headways and Congestion Management Project. Um, I will move. Councilman Weathers seconds. Councilman O'Connell, do you want me to start or do you, do you want to start or do you want to go straight to Marty for explanation? Uh, I'll, I will move approval, I guess. Okay. We've already motioned. I just okay. didn't know if you had questions no, or comments I, before nope. we went to Marty. All right. Marty, can you explain what we're doing here and what part of how far down Charlotte we're going? Sure. This is this particular project is for um, transit headways and congestion management. It's fiber installation, traffic signal upgrades, and, and software improvements for the WeGo system. It's going to enhance the real-time monitoring of the roadway and transit conditions. It's a 4.8-mile stretch of Charlotte and MLK all the way from 4th Avenue to White Bridge. Um, it will allow for dynamic management of route, route 50, and it's going to be able to optimize our vehicle headways and allow for the capacity with active transit um, management to reduce congestion and increase the reliability for the, for the TMC that's also associated with this. Councilman O'Connell, this goes through my district, and I have not been briefed on it. Um, I don't know if Councilman Taylor has been, since it would go through his district as well. Are you all right with rolling this one bill, one meeting? Well, as long as it doesn't jeopardize the grant, I'm fine. Where are we on timing? It's fine. Okay. Um, if you're all right with that, Councilman O'Connell, Councilman Withers will rescind his motion. I rescind mine, and I'd like to defer this one meeting. Fine with me. Thank you, Councilman Withers and Councilman O'Connell for the second. Um, all those, any other questions on this before we move forward? All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? And I think that takes us, we got 24, thank you. Item 24, BL 2021-811 by Council Lady Roberts changes R6 to RM9 for properties located at 5607, 5607. 5607B, 5609, and 5611 Morrow Road, approximately 60 feet southeast of 57th Avenue North. We do not have a letter. It is deferred by rule. It's a disapproved bill. That's why I didn't sign on, but I signed on to the others. And I think that is everything. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Excellent. Thank you, y'all.